Okay, what do, you, what do you want to know? So today, today is Monday, the 15th of December, 2014. Mm -hmm. And we're at, on our second interview with David Tapperson in his house. Tapperson, T-E-P. Tapperson. He's, ta he's Tapperson, me, and I'm Tapperson. Tapperson, at he, your house in Kfar Shmaiyao. That's right. And number yeah, 10, Chavatzelet. Chavatzelet, number 10. Yesterday we um, talked about your childhood, your immigration, your journey to, to Israel. And yesterday, <clears throat> you couldn't remember the date when you landed in Israel. Now, I read your book. It came out. And it came out. And I'm gonna... On the day the state was declared. Exactly. That I remember afterwards. And the day the state was declared, I got off the boat. Now, and I went straight to, to Alexandroni. Yeah, but there's a lot of things that are, happened in the middle that you wrote you write here. And one of them is, what do you see from the deck of the boat when you're still on the boat in the port of Tel Aviv with the, the, the Egyptian Air Force? There's a thing that you write here about the, the airplanes. The, the Egyptian the, airplanes were shot down and one, one crashed. That's down. right. Can you tell they me about crashed that? on the beach. I know the story and what happened there. Why do I know the story? They took the Egyptian pilot, prisoner of war. Who took him prisoner of war? That's where the story came out. For an Egyptian pilot, a man, to be taken prisoner by two woman soldiers was a so deep rap. He begged to be, to please bring them, a man to take him to prison, not woman. His whole, his whole life was ruined if they hear the story that he was captured by a woman. The mentality of the Egyptian. I'm trying to show, sure. and this is a true story. But what did you what did you guys see from the deck? Oh, you, you see planes fighting. Never. Hmm? It's difficult to, to remember all the details, but when you're young like that, it's all part of the uh, part of the excitement. So you arrive on the 15th of May, 1948. 1948. The day, it's a Friday, the day the state of Israel was, was declared. Declared, and you think that you might have been one of the first boats to come in as we were the first boat to come into the new state of Israel. How did I know from the Jewish agency? I gave them my passport material, and they had it missing. They didn't have my boat, the Teti, wasn't registered because it was the fifteenth of May. And the fighting was going, was really, afterwards I gave him my Jewish agency passport with a stamp in it, Teti, so they had a document to prove that Teti came in on the 15th. Otherwise it wasn't registered anyway, because of the war breaking out. So this is why they were very pleased to get, so Atlit was really pleased to get my material. Who was very pleased, Atlit? Atlit, you have the museum of Ali Abed. Mm -hmm. I sent them my material and my photos of, photos of my passport that, that proved that Teti came in on this and this date. Yeah. Okay. It says here, at 5 o'clock in the morning on May the 15th, we moved towards the Tel Aviv port. Being, I think, the first ship to hoist the Israeli flag when entering the, the new port of the state of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. And actually, we're going over some of these notes here. Of course, there's a lot of a lot of pictures. You get into detail about. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to read. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce some things from from here, and then I want you to try and reflect on them. So I don't want to just read stuff. I want to read something, and then you think about it for a second, see if you can elaborate on it a little bit more. He's picking my brains. Okay. He's I'm picking, picking I'm them. Picking, I'm picking your exactly. He's picking them in a dirty I'm, way. I'm, pick, I'm picking. I'm picking your brains, and we're gonna. We're we're actually starting from your. From the fifteenth of May when you when you arrive, and it says here. Our ship, the Teddy, moved closer towards Tel Aviv port. Um, um, da -da -da, wait a sec. Okay, here we go. Suddenly, Egyptian spitfires were over Tel Aviv. 
We moved away from the coast, and from the deck we watched the planes bombing Tel Aviv. One of the planes was shot down and crashed nose first into the sandy beach north of Tel Aviv. We saw it happening from the ship. It was like watching a movie. An hour later, we disem disembarked. So what do you want? Again, you told me that's what you told me, but was there, was there a, f were, were the planes just flying over there or there was like a, it was like- there was No, a they were uh, shooting Tel Aviv. They were bombing Tel Aviv. And the one was shot down. And the boys that shot him down were all Machamiks. World War II veterans that were there. And they were firing a machine gun from the roof. From one of the roofs in Tel Aviv? Yeah, that's right. Was it an anti-aircraft uh, gunner, or you don't know? A machine gun's a machine gun. A machine gun, a machine gun brought the plane down? As far as well, I know, yes. Yeah. Because we didn't have artillery. No. So we had our machine guns. And you know, a revolver bullet can bring a plane down. What kind of, what kind of, what kind of, like, uh, you know, some people get off a plane in Hawaii and they have women dancing for them and some people will come to a place and there's people giving them flowers. This is a very uh, <coughs> crazy welcoming to the land of Israel. I didn't think of it that way. It's like taking a bus and getting off. It's like going by bus. That's what, I didn't think of it that way. Was, a, was everybody on the boat watching this hap unfold? Do you remember? I slept on board with 11 very interesting people. They were all Finns, Jewish Finns. Fin as in Finland? Finland, and they all fought right. with the Finnish army and had German uniforms. Right. You told, yeah, we talked about that, yeah. And uh, they were very interesting characters. There were two girls among them. One of the girls, was looking for an American to marry, so she could go to America. Her dream, you know, you had these Jews that had the dream, America, America. In those days, get to America. They had the girls in, Cape, uh, in, in Tel Aviv looking for, for Americans. They could marry American and go to America. Some of them, I know of one or two cases, you had, you had the German woman that came, that came out of, out of World War Two, good-looking girls, but they weren't youngsters anymore, and they were all looking for husbands to get to America. So I know of even cases where they they were married women, and they married an American to get to. When it got to America, she divorced him, and brought a real husband. I know one or two cases like that. Okay. Let's get back. After World War II, to survive, people did funny sure. things. Yeah. Sure. And it's, it's not in our place to judge. To judge no. Because it's very difficult to judge someone like of that. Of course, of course, of course. You want to survive. We, Look, Rina's surviving because she sticks to me. Otherwise, I'd be dead. Um, so when you get off the boat, um, There's, a, there's, a, there's an incident that you mentioned here about before you get off the boat. It says, there was one unforgettable incident that took place while we were waiting to disembark. When one of the agency's officers suddenly discovered his brother on board, each mm -hmm. had thought that the other had been killed in the concentration camps. They were shouting and hugging each other. That's right. <clears throat> that was a very interesting, well, why it was interesting. They started screaming, we didn't know where, and they were screaming in the Polish language, <laughs> in Polish. Yeah. I mean, they spoke both Polish, and the one, one discovered the other brother alive. I mean, it was quite a, an exciting thing to look at. I'm a South African coming out. I didn't, I didn't live through all the, the angers that they went through in Europe. But uh, it was very interesting to watch. This brotherly love mixture and it was part of life i was very lucky to be in the right place at the right time and i saw some very interesting things because of that or oh, i took part in some of the interesting things 
like we did raids behind the enemy lines right. and we'll, things we'll like get, that. We'll get, we'll get to that. Um, I mean, it's just, I mean, again, I'm, I'm trying to dig into your emotions and I'm trying to take these two events that happened to you on the boat, the bombing, the, you see these Egyptian spitfires bombing Tel Aviv. <clears throat> One of them crashes, and then like an hour later, you see this beautiful reunion of these two brothers. I mean, I want to know, and I know that your, 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 your answer is going to be like, well, this is what it was, and this is what it was, but what are you feeling at this moment? I mean, you're like, you're just about, you're just about to get off. And Who go. had time to feelings? No time you're to 21 feelings. years old. You're looking for action. You want to get in the fight. And you're dying to get in the fight. You want action, and you push yourself forward. And I volunteered for anything that was going. You volunteer for anything going, let me do it. I told you that I'm alive today because I carried an Englishman on my back. I told you the story. Okay, we're going to get to that, yeah. That, okay. Was that in the Negev, or was that in the... In, in that was in the Negev. That was in the Negev. We're going to get to that, because we haven't gotten to the Negev yet. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember your... Uh, so when you get off of the off, off of the boat, they take you to uh, Kiryat Meir mm -hmm. to, to the army camp. Is that is that correct? Yeah, that's right. And uh, do you remember what you what, 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 what you, did you have like medical exams there or like what? They lined us up. I got five numbers. My friend got four numbers. What does that mean? Four numbers, five numbers. My number, my army number today is two four three seven four. My friend got four numbers. It depends on which line you're in. Okay. Because they, that, the day the state was declared, we were joining the army. And we got numbers according to where the army dished them out. So we were dishing out numbers and getting numbers. So I said, not fair. He came after me and he got a lower, a lower number. And did, did anything... Uh what happens at Camp Meir? Where is Camp Meir exactly located? Can you tell me? Like yes. In today's Tel, Tel Aviv. There's a big park uh, in the center of Tel Aviv. What's it called? I'll take it. It was a British army camp. Uh-huh. Uh, you remember what it was called? The army camp in the middle of Tel Aviv. Near Tach Tachana Merkazit, uh, not of Tachana Merkazit, near uh, Tchafon Tel Aviv. Uh, Look at me. Kiryat, not, not Kiryat Maya. Kiryat Maya, yeah. I need you to look at me, not at her. Uh, no, Kiryat, I'm trying to think. Okay. Kiryat Maya. Kiryat Maya. Was one of the camps. North part of Tel Aviv. That's right. It so was, how, long, how long are you there for? A day, two days, a week? I don't remember. And they took me at night, knocked on the door of the nearest little house, and asked, uh, and asked the people to put us up and feed exactly, us. Exactly, exactly. And they, they, because they, they didn't have room for you guys. We slept on the floor in this, in this woman's house and she fed us. Do you remember where it was? In Tel Aviv? It was right near Habima, that I remember. Why? In the morning, they were supposed to, I wanted to go to the Palmach, so I fixed with them that I'll be waiting on the steps of the Abima. That's and, later. And they, came later. To, yeah, and they came to fetch me. That's later. On the evening I went into town with a couple of boys to, t um, to take my first looks, looks at Tel Aviv. On the 16th of May, I was shipped to the, to the Dora camp in Dora the south was, coast of Netanya. That's right. Tell, Dora was a big, big British army camp. I'll never forget, they had a big movie there that was damaged. Why it was damaged? Because the Etzel bombed it when the British were there. They bombed the movie in some... Uh, with, uh, with, 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 they had British soldiers. You remember Etzel was fighting the British. So they, well, they bombed it. So they bombed quite a, a lot of um, things. So that was uh, Dora. It was an army camp, a huge army camp. And we spent time there. And they trained us in the armored cars. Okay. The armored cars were the, were, were the sandwich cars. You know what? The, you explained to me yesterday. Okay. Yes, we talked about the sandwich car. 
So you're at, at Camp Dora, Machane Dora, mm -hmm. which is probably a little bit north of where we are right now. Natanya. Natanya, yeah. Natanya. yeah. It's north of Natanya. It's north of Natanya, okay. And basically there, your destiny or your destiny for the meantime is sealed. Is what? Sealed. Your destiny is sealed within the Israeli army. You are... A soldier. A soldier. First. In the, in the Alexandroni Brigade, is that correct? That's right. Okay. And the Alexandroni Brigade is an armored brigade? Alexandroni Brigade is not an armored brigade. It's a brigade that has an armored battalion, the 34th Armored Cars. They were called the 34th Armored Cars. They were sandwich cars. You know what sandwich cars are? And I've got pictures. I can show you a picture of me and the whole crew together. Okay. We, were, we were 10 of us with an Israeli corporal. With an Israeli corporal? Who's in the sandwich cars. Okay. You know what the sandwich cars yes, are? I do. Yes, I do. How long are you in... So, it, I mean, don't you have to do like some sort of basic training or something? Don't you have to like... The war started, you went in as a soldier. I was lucky, I grew up with a rifle in my hand, Af hunting in Africa. Yeah, but all good, and, all good and nice, but what's the connection of fighting the Arab Legion, knowing how to hunt? Is there a connection? Have you ever taken a city boy and tried to make a soldier of him? Yeah. It's very difficult. Why? He's lived in the city all his life. I lived in the country. I would look up in the hill and say, oh, there's someone walking on the hill. You wouldn't see him. I'd see him. Okay. Because my eyesight was adjust. They told me this, to hunting in Africa. So I looked at things from a long way. It's like driving a car. When you're a city person, you look 10 meters ahead of the car, not further. I looked 150 meters. When you go hunting a lot, you're looking way ahead. It's a different mentality. Okay. How, how long are you at Camp... Like, is Camp Dora like your main base? Is that where you're stationed out mm -hmm. of? That's where you're sleeping, that's where you're eating, mm -hmm. that's where you're showering. Mm -hmm. And then from there... It you're was going, a big British army. Sure. Camp. And yeah. then from there you're going out to missions, or mm -hmm. you're going out in, into... That's into, right. Okay. Um, at Camp Dora, I joined the 34th Armored Vehicle Battalion of the Alexandroni Alexand 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 Brigade, which was... The third brigade. That's right. Okay. We had 12 brigades in those days. Yes. Alexandroni was number three. We were formed into a platoon of a lot of boys who were World War II veterans. Our platoon of 20 or 25 men consisted of South African, Englishmen, Norwegians, Swedes, and the Finnish boys. Some who had come, uh, come with me on the boat. So your platoon is all Maha. All Mahal people, your platoon, mm -hmm. yeah, your squad or platoon. That's in, right. In, in a platoon, there's three squads, isn't that correct? That's right. right. So, your platoon is Mahal, and these are these are where the, the countries that they're from. It's, it's, you know. um, <clears throat> do you understand at this point that uh, that do you, do you know what the situation is? Like, yes, there's a war, you know there's a war, but do you understand how si critical the situation is? Are you told? No. Well, you're 21, you're, got, you're looking for action, you're looking for the opposite. I understand, but the situation is very... I not, wasn't old enough there, to look. There, there's a siege, in, do you know about what's going on in Jerusalem? There's a siege, people are starving there. That's oh. way, way away from me. I'm, I'm a youngster of 21, I'm looking for action next door. Any book. In World War II, any unit, fighting unit, to take the Marines, the what's the name? It's a, it's a comradeship of, of, of fighters together. The Hevra, where's the Hevra? You know that thing? What the Hevra is? You know what the Hevra yes, is? Yes, 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 of course. So that caught you and you lived with that Hevra business. I'm 21 years old. <clears throat> So you're trying to tell me that you have absolutely no idea what's going on around you. You don't care what's going on around you. You just want to fight. 
I'm looking for the, I'm so busy keeping alive and living with the action that you don't even think of those things. I told you the story how uh, 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 an Englishman saved my life. We're going to get to that, but okay. we haven't gotten to Why that. am I telling you that? Yeah. Because it just shows you the, the, the situation then. I carried him on my back, he was wounded in the leg, and he caught all the bullets that I should have caught, he saved my life, so I said he kept me alive. It says here in the Alexandrian Brigade, I took part. Wait a second. And I'm quoting this is from your book. In the Alexandrian Brigade, I took part in the first battles around Tantora. Tantura. Tantura, Rosha Ain, Kfarsaba. That's right. And the capture of Karkon. A what? Karkon. Karkun. Karkun. Karkun was an Arab village which had been held by the Iraqi army. I That's also right. took part in various actions and patrols on the Central Front. During the first truce, after the El Talena affair, mm -hmm. uh, four Machal volunteers were sent to the IDF. Corporals, cor we'll talk about you being sent to the Corporals Chorus. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do that in a sec. That's actually a big like promotion. But mm -hmm. well, we're gonna get to that. I want you to tell me what you remember from these four incidents. These battles, these skirmishes, whatever. And we're going to start with the first one, which was uh, tan Tantura. What's Tantura. Tan what's Tantura? Where is Tantura it? is today a, a big Arab city on the border of Israel. Okay. Hold the on West Bank in Israel. Tantura. If you go from, if you go from Netanya and you travel towards the Arab area, you get to Tantura, which is this Arab village. It was on the border of the West Bank and Israel. And Tantura became, became an, I did, I, I did a lot of Miluim there. And the Tantura police station, we used to do Miluim. Okay, so there was there a police station there? Huh? Was there a British police station there that the Arabs took yes, over? Yes, Arab, yes, was yes. The, was it the Iraqis or the Jordanians in Tantura? Do you remember? The Tantura were Iraqis. Iraqis. And is that the first time you see action, like action, action, besides the plane on the boat that you saw the, the battle, but... I never really thought of it that way. Okay. It comes naturally. You, I mean, you train and watch them and you prepare for it mentally all the time, so it's not the first time that you take it already. It always reminds me of uh, when we were in the Negev, we were cut off and we were stuck on a little, on a wadi. And in the valley there was an island about as big as this room that was about four meters high. And the Spitfires used to come, the Egyptian Spitfires used to come every day and shoot at us. I'll tell, and this story comes later. But why am I telling you that? Because we, we ran a path around that, that island because if the Spitfire came from here, we ran to the other side. So the time we moved from that area, we'd made a path around the island. Is there anything, Tantua, Rosha Ayn, Kfar Saba, these are all... Little places that we had fights in. That you had fights. Anything significant about we, any of them? That you remember being hurt, being injured? Uh, uh, uh. I wasn't hurt to injure touch wood. My armored car was hit. My ears were blocked up from the noise of, the, of a shell hitting the sidewall of the armored car, and the, the ricochet of the noise. That stayed with me. Uh, but we went on laughing. For instance, like we went into, t t when we captured the village. Which village? Tantura. Tantura? Well, not only Tantura, there were little villages around. Yeah. So we went in there and captured chickens. We filled the car up with chickens. At six in the morning, we went, went and the Mem Sadik, they brought the Mem Sadik in to stop looting and what's the name. And we went there and we were all, all machal and we needed money. So what did we do? Five o'clock in the morning, we went and we come to the roadblock and uh, we start shouting, wounded, wounded, wounded. And one of the blokes put a slam bandage, what's the name? 
דחוף. So we, he, the, members, the, the MPs let us through quickly, quickly. They even gave us an escort into town. And uh, <coughs> we get into town and we start taking chickens out like this. All the ladies <laughs> in Khadera went running to get chickens. It was rationed. What are they? So everyone came half a, we, for half a pound. It was half a pound, I remember. They paid for a chicken. <laughs> So you guys made some money. What do you mean? We made a lot of money. <laughs> we even had a calf we sold to the butcher for more. So you guys, you guys took the chickens from Tantura after yeah. the battle? You smuggled no, them? No, from the little villages around. Yeah. I mean, there was a village here and a village here, and they all had chickens running around, no one living there. So we were capturing chickens. And we brought, the ch and we brought a calf in too. And the calf the butcher bought. So we made a little bit of money. Okay, so the, these are the stories that I want to hear. These little stories, these little anecdotes. This is what are, this is, these are things that are not written in the history books. That's right. And these are the things that I want to... I'll tell more you, important for I'll, me. Tell, I'll tell you little stories like that. Okay, excellent. So that's a great story. So, so basically what you did is... Um, that's amazing. Because that's very human. And everything was rationed at the time, of course. You couldn't get chicken. Beef, we didn't of. realize it. We were soldiers. I understand. I understand. But the, the people, the woman went with sugar. And, and this, you went to Hadera and you, you sold them in Hadera? And we held them up like this half a, and every woman came with their half a pound to buy a chicken. And the chickens were alive when you sold yes, them. Yes, yes. Yeah, you didn't slaughter them, they did. They didn't. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. When, when you were in these battles, like around uh, Ten, uh, Tantura and Rosh Ein, there's... And this is like the historians, and this is not me saying it, but this is the historian saying that a lot of the Arab uh, population were, were forced to leave. They were... They were uh, and when forced. Okay, that's exactly what I want to ask you. Is it true f from your knowledge... From these, my knowledge... From your knowledge, your personal knowledge... My personal about knowledge. Israeli soldiers forcing Arabs to, to evacuate their villages. The Arabs were told by their leaders, leave the villages and we will come back when the fighting is over. And a lot of them left because of that. They believed that oh, the Arab legion is coming in and, uh, and the Jordanians and all these Arabs are coming in. They felt strong. So they left and they said, we'll come back. They locked the doors and walked away. So they never came back. This and is, those are the refugees of 1948. That's right. Those are the refugees of 1948. You had Jewish refugees too. Of course. We had the Yemenites. That from, there was a village near Tantura. I remember the Jewish refugees coming and we coming to help them. With a half cut. With our, uh, sorry. With our Ahmed cars. Where, where were the Jewish refugees coming from? Around Tantura there was a village, a Jewish village, and they were, they were running away from, they were Yemenites, that I remember. And we came to, to back them up, to stop the advance of Iraqi soldiers. Do you remember what village this was? Of, of, mm. Do you remember what Jewish village this was? From Tantura, before you get to Tantura, there were a couple of Jewish villages. There was also the armored, the, the, the camp of 21 on the, on the, on the, on the Tanya corner, Machane Esrim Bachat, Machane Esrim Bashtaim. This was all British uh, army camps. Sure. And uh, they had the, the Arab villages around that. Rina. He's cutting my head in two. Don't worry. Um, okay, so that, that's Tantura. Okay, and then there was also the Battle of Russia Ein. There was something going on in Russia Ein. What was happening in Russia Ein? Okay. Russia Ein was on the, on the border. Yeah. We remember, I remember going up there and we had the Lebanese on the other side. Lebanese? Rosh Ha'ayin was on the border of uh, Lebanon. No. 
Near Petah Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Iraqis, maybe. Iraqis, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember we had some Arab army. <laughs> and the Iraqis were there. Uh, we captured a lot of uh, prisoners of war Iraqis, and at night they ran away. You captured Iraqi POWs? POWs. Yeah. And at night time, they ran away. We hadn't taken them prisoners yet, but they, they'd surrendered. And when it got dark, they ran away into, 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 into Jordan. So they all disappeared, so we didn't have prisoners. Then I remember them running away. And we said, let them go. What are we going to do with them? We can't feed them. We didn't have food. We didn't have what's them. In those days, we took a lot of prisoners and let them walk. I let the Egyptian prisoners walk all the way back to Egypt. We'll get to that. We're not there yet. Uh, is there anything else you remember about Russia Ayn, about fighting there? Um, anything significant? A little shoot here, a little shoot there, a little shoot here. I can't remember all the details. Yeah. What kind of weapon, what kind of, per, what's your personal weapon that you have on you? Is it a gun? Is it a rifle? I had a Bren gun. A Bren? Because I'm big, so it was like a machine gun with me. Is it like a mug? Huh? A mug, that later. That later. Uh, I had a machine gun, and afterwards I had a, 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 a my main gun was a, uh, 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 a 34 Mauser, the machine gun for Sloshim uh, uh, Arba, a Mauser, uh, the German gun, uh, machine gun. That was, we had it on our jeeps, we had the bottom. These were our main machine guns. I fired millions of bullets with that one. Uh, I also had a Bren, and I had a, a Anything we captured from the other side. Okay. I usually carry two, three weapons. And grenades. Mm -hmm. I, I, I captured from, the, uh, from there, but I took them, and these were my weapons. What about um, the battle in uh, Kfar Saba? It says here that there was, uh, that you, uh, it says, the battles that, that I took part in, in the Alexandroni Brigade was Tantur, which we talked about, mm. Russia Ein, which we talked about, Kfar Saba. Mm. It, it's the same. The village of Kfar Saba, we battled the, the, for, uh, the Arab Legion. Yeah, Jordan, Jordanians. Yeah. yeah. What we did was uh, we held the line, put it that way. You know what I mean? Holding the line. We held the line against the Jordanians. We used to travel in our armored cars, which were sandwich cars, and bring supplies in. Into Kfar Saba? No, into our units that were in different areas. They had to get supplies, but they had to go through certain areas that were mixed Arab Jews. So we, we, we used to travel with the supplies. We'd take the the command, the cars that we had, bring the supplies and ammunition and take the wounded out. And of course, chickens and stuff like that we took out too and sold them in the market to make money. And when we came to, to the MPs, we shot, Nivgaim, Nivgaim, and one of the boys put a magic on his head, oh, 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 and they put him, Chadik, and opened the door, let us out wounded with the veterans. So they, they were they were bastards back then too. Huh? They were bastards back then too. What do you mean we made a lot of no, money? The Memtsadikim. Memtsadik is Memtsadik. He is out to fuck the soldier. <laughs> In every army. Yeah, I know. Um, and then la uh, at the end here it says that you also participated in the capture of Karkon. Karkun? Karkun. Karkun. Karkun was the Arab village. Okay, t what is Karkun? Tell me about the capture of Karkun. I'm going to go back and think. Okay, let's, we have time. Think about it. I want to what know. did I write about? Let me just get my okay, memory. This is back. what you wrote. You wrote uh, which 
had been held by the Iraqi army. That's right. So think about it for a second. I'm just going to write something down here. Karkun. Karku. Karkun. K-A-R-K-O-N. Karkun was an Arab village. There was Karku, too, which is a Jewish village. Karkun. Karku is a Jewish village. Karkun was an Arab village. You see, I take Rina as my backup. She remembers all these places. She had boyfriends everywhere. There, apparently, you 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 um, captured the village from the Iraqi army, so they were um, they held the village. Mm -hmm. Was it a village or a city? A village. Village. These are all villages. They. Anything. Anything. Um, Happened there? Anything that you can remember? One thing I remember, there were two old Arabs. They were both wounded, a woman and a man. Civilians. Huh? Civilians. Civilians. Yeah. And we came in there, we found them suffering. They were practically dying. I'll never forget them. The officer came in and we couldn't take them anywhere prisoners because we were still battling. And uh, they both died. They were nearly dead there already. But he says, what am I going to do with them? I can't take them prison, I can't take them with them. He wanted to let them go and they couldn't walk. But they both, I remember they both died. That I remember. Uh, you see, an old couple died, but it's not the death that, of the couple that I, that affected the, the an old civilian you see there, and uh, I don't know how to put it. I felt sorry for them, but uh, that's that's life, if you know what I mean. Do you still see them? Mm -hmm. Do you still see them in your in your in your? No. Mind? In your, no, you if I had to see everything I've done, what would you have you? If what? I'd be my sugar. Would you? Oh, <laughs> I've killed a lot. Shot a lot. You don't watch and see who you kill. Of course. You, op you open fire. But apparently this... I even came across... But apparently... I had one thing that I did suffer. We shot an Arab running, and it turned out to be a little girl. When was and this? Had, we all felt terrible. In the Negev? Yes. We'll talk about that in a sec. Um, you shot Talon, 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 it's come here. Erfe Edak. Erfe Edak is lift your hands and come here. Talon, Erfe Edak, and you capture them. Um, anything else about, uh, about the, the capture of this village? Which one? Uh, I also took part in various actions and patrols on the central front. That's that whole area. So let, let, That's let, all let, around okay, Natanya. Let, let's, set, let's sum it up your Alexandroni period right here. And mm -hmm. So you, you're telling me that you didn't like to be in the Alexandroni Brigade because it was boring, there wasn't enough action. Uh, there was too, mu too much bullshit. What kind of bullshit? Small you mean? What? Small you mean? Explain that to me. Small you mean? Left, right. What? They had bullshit in the army. When I was in the Palmach, it was the Hevra. We had no marching, bullshit, standing to attention, you know, that type of thing we didn't have. They, put, they, they continued British, British <laughs> army way of, way of being in the army. Were we in the Palmach? Okay, we're going to get to the Palmach, but, what, but, but that why I, is marching uh, bullshit? Why? Not bullshit. You have, you have to have... Uh, if you watch the American movies, they take you into the army, and for three months they make you a robot to... That's the bullshit, what I call. Left, right. We didn't have bullshit. We learned to fight. We fought. So what was your problem with the Alexandroni Brigade? They had, they had too much bullshit. Too much discipline? 
bullshit. What is bullshit? Marching? Is that bullshit? No. It's the way you run the unit. That you get in the morning, you, know, you do your guard duty, you do your everything according to the British book. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. Uh, and we were in the Palmach, and the Palmach was to get up in the morning. How did, how did the watch them used to say, what's his name? I'll tell you his name in a minute. How do you used to wake us up in the morning in the Negev? You throw a grenade down. I understand, but now you're in the Alexandroni Brigade. You have no idea what the Palmach is like. No, no. You have no idea. And, but it says here, during the first truce, after the El Telena affair, four Machal volunteers were sent to the to the first IDF corporal's course, myself, a South African, mm -hmm. one Englishman and two Scandinavians. So you at okay, so now the war is there's a truce. Okay, there's a truce. It's uh, June, I think, nineteen forty eight. You're here already a month, you've seen you've seen action, you've been in some battles, Farsaba. Uh, um, um, uh, Russia, Ein, I carried, I, ca I carried, carried wounded on my back. You carried wounded soldiers on your back. You. I'm alive today because some guy died on my back. But that was in the negative. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna, we, we're not in the negative yet. We gotta okay. stay cr chronologically. And now, you're sent to a cor corporal's course. Can you explain to me what that means? I don't, I don't. Responsibility. Okay. So you're actually being promoted. I'm pro not promoted as much as. The course is a course. The course is about. Mem kafim. Mem kafim. I actually became a sergeant. In those days, mem kafim. Do you remember where the course was? Dan the kotra. Where was it? No. And do you remember how long it was for the course? Huh? Look, any course you went to in those days, sure. in the middle of the course you'd be pulled out and sent here and sent there and sent here. We'd go to action and we're still in the course. Yeah. So it's really difficult to remember all those details. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, let me see here. So apparently your your superiors in the Alexandroni Brigade see a quality in you that is a quality of a leader, of somebody who can make decisions, and they send you to to uh, to this course. Uh, all my life I, I was willing to take responsibilities, and uh, I never consulted. They sent me to the court because they thought I've got leadership, and I'm big. And I had a problem afterwards in the army in Milwim. Akharai, all the soldiers were willing to go with me because I was a veteran. I couldn't, I'm big, I stick out in what's name, and I make decisions. I don't, uh, I don't bullshit around. So I had a problem that all the soldiers, when I went on Milwim, were willing to do patrols with me, but not with my, my juniors, because they'd never been, <laughs> they hadn't been seen in action. So it makes a difference. The soldier's got to be, have belief in his officer. Of course. Of course. And I had very good following that way. Is there anything you, significant that you remember about the course, Makim? I'll probably, if I sit down and think about it, I'll probably start th thinking of something. Okay. Okay. Well, if you do, let, 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 me, uh, let me know. Rina, um, when did I meet you? Course, Makim or not? You want another cup of coffee? Uh, in, a, in a bit. <clears throat> in a bit. Okay. So Hannibal! Yeah. Hannibal! I'm, I'm taking. Okay. You want a cup of coffee? Please. One cup of coffee for me, one cup of coffee do, for the gentleman. Do you have Turkish coffee? Yes. No. Okay, that's fine. So it says here, and I, I'm, I'm quoting. During my period of training at Corporal's Course, we were sent into action as a company of trained soldiers. We took part in the counterattack and recapture of Kula. 
That's right. Which was held by the Jordanian army and the local Arab fighters. Kula, at first uh, held by Israelis, was later captured by the Jordanian Air, by the Jordanian and Arab fighters, who often killed and mutilated our men. Twenty-eight soldiers of of the thirty-second battalion of the Alexandroni right. were killed in this. They were fight. taken captures. Okay, wait a minute. We're talking about the Battle of Kula. Kula. I saw their bodies. Kula. Okay. So you're in Kursmakim, and you're pulled out of Kursmakim to go into this battle. Please. Course Maki went in the battle. Course Maki, yeah. We all went as a course. And there we saw our, uh, they captured our, the boys they captured from us. The Arabs would take an ear to show they killed a Jew. I'm talking Falachim. The Falachim, you know what I mean by Falachim? And this was their way of doing things. The another thing they used to cut is their testes. They'd take them home to show they killed the Jew. So I, uh, we saw the, the bodies of these people mutilated. Made us mad, but what could we do? Was Kula a village? What was it? A village, an Arab village. There was Kula and there was Karkun. All these are Arab villages. Was it a, was it a, was there a, a battle there to regain the, the to regain control of the village? Yes. So only when you re, only when you conquered the village did you see the mutilated bodies. Yes. These were boys that taken they counterattacked and recaptured the village, and the people they captured they killed and mutilated the bodies. They took home my ear, you know, to show they were good, big fighters. This is with Arab falachim, you know. The, the farmers and things like that, they were big fighters. And when, they killed, when they captured us, they, they, they took our ear, they took the balls. They had to show their men. Mutilated bodies. Did you, uh, did you guys bury these bodies or you sent them back to be buried properly? Probably. I didn't deal with that. Yeah, you didn't deal with that. that what did you deal with then? I was a corporal. I dealt with, with the battle. I didn't deal with the wounded, and I didn't deal with the, the dead. You held your position, you dug in, and what and things like that. You do the normal things that army teaches you. Mutilated, be right. Tortured, but not mutilated. Tortured. Huh? <laughs> mutilated, what? There is a Hebrew word. Yes, there is. I can't think about it right now. Oh, that's right. Mutilated. Okay. Is there anything? Anything else that you remember about uh, the, the Kula? The way we captured it. But the one thing I do remember Kula, I told you they were an old couple. No, that dying. was at... Uh, they, yeah. they, they died there, oh, an old Arab couple. Yeah, we talked about the old Arab couple. During the truce, the soldiers on the corporal's course took part in the police action in the battle of the, uh, of the capture of the, of the Iraqi soldiers in Rosh Ha'ayim. And Jabba... Jabba was a, a village. My company commander in the corporal's course was Ram, a neighbor of, of my future wife. During the ceasefire at the end of July, after I finished my course, I was made sergeant in charge of Machal Oversea Volunteers Group. I asked permission from Yitzhak Moda'i my company commander, to allow me to join friends in the Palmach. He refused and said he needed me to help with the Machal volunteers. So is this Yitzhak Moda'i who became the member of Knesset? Yes. Yeah, the Minister of Finance? Yes, 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 that's him. Okay. So 
I want to ask you about uh, about a very famous incident. I know that you weren't there, but I want to know about because it, it, it's happening during this truce. Well, the truce is kind of over, but where are you when the the whole thing of the Altalena happens? Do you remember that at all? Do you remember people talking about it? Because uh, and the reason I'm asking is because uh, it's a very I mean, they say that this was a very crucial moment in our history because we almost had a civil war breaking out while we're fighting five Arab countries who are around us. I want to know where you were or when you when you heard about it and what were your thoughts about it? What are, what are your thoughts about the Altalena? At the, uh, at the Altalena itself, I was involved. In which way? They, you know, on the coast, we closed off Alexandroni. They sent us to close off the coast of Natanya, where the Altalina was. The Altalina, the boat in Tel Aviv, too. And they sent us, I went as a soldier, and I'll never forget, the, we cut off these youngsters from Etzel. What they had came running there to watch them. They were all youngsters before the army. And they'd been there with guns and, and the Etzel Nikimi, which was Etzel against the Haganah. That's when Ben Gurion said, We've got to have one army, we can't have two. And uh, I agreed fully with him. I was there on the border together. On the other side, there, I had two Yemenites. One was on our side, and one was on the other. And they were shouting at each other. That I remember so well. And we couldn't understand why this business, did, why they had to go separately. It's Haganah, I couldn't understand that. I came to fight for as a Jew. I had a different mentality. How come Jews are fighting Jews? And this was politics, I hated politics. And it was all politics, it was Big Gurion. And Begin. And Begin, not yet, but it's a Big Gurion, Begin. But I admired Ben Gurion. He was my top of the ho top of the herd. So you do you remember um, how the day ended? So you were you were cut you were cutting off the the, the, the road uh, near um, Kvarvitkin, maybe because that's where the boat first came in. The Altalina came in. That's right. Kvarvitkin. That's right. All of the immigrants got. I was off. there. I was there. Was it Kvarvitkin where you where you were near? I was. And then the boat ran away and went down to right. Tel Aviv, and then the, that's where the battle happened. That's right. So where were you? I was in Kvavitkin, and afterwards they moved us down to Tel Aviv to cut the boat off. They moved the same Alexandroni people, the same unit, to, to cut them off, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because we had to cut them off in Tel Aviv. It was a battle between uh, the Etzel trying to... They had the... What, what, what made me mad about them about the Etzel. We were fighting with nothing. And after we captured the Etzel uh, slicks, I couldn't believe it. We had the men, and they had more guns than we had. We opened up the, the slicking. Where? There were buried guns all over the place among the Padashim. They buried guns. And we found them out. What the, but, what made me mad was we had junk guns, and yeah, you had first-class weapons, Brens, and what's them. They had all the weapons they were in the world, and they didn't have the men to supply them with. But they hid the weapons. It was a, that made me so mad, at, because I said, we're both Jews fighting, but the one hides a bit from the other. That made me a bit mad. And where... Uh, where did you see the, the because there's the Yitzhak Rabin uh, commanded the, the 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 forces on the beach that shot the cannon that hit the boat that it exploded that it went on fire and all the guns in there and people died. Were you actually on the beach when it happened? Did you were you there or do you remember? I'm trying to think back. It's okay. I was brought there. By my friend Minky and me. Minky was a captain in World War II. 
and we both came down there. And what made us mad was these youngsters on the beach were shooting at us. And we went without ammunition. We didn't want to shoot Jews to Jews on the beach. And Minky and myself, Minky afterwards got mad and went to the kibbutz. He left the army because of that. And uh, I continued, but anyway, it, it made us mad. The way, the way they, they treated us, put it that way. Who's they? <coughs> yeah, I came as a volunteer to fight. Right. And yeah, they treated me like an enemy, if you know what I mean. Who treated you like an enemy? The kids on the other side. When I say kids, they were kids. The Etzel people? Yeah. And we still, I still argued with them, and I said, I'm Jewish just like you, what do you find? I'm not a politician. What are you fighting politics for? They made politics of it. Etzel were fighting. Etzel were fighting Haganah. But Haganah, I said, Haganah is 90% of the arm. How big was Etzel? How big was Lechi? Do you remember the, the smoke coming out of the boat? Do you remember seeing it from far away? I'm sure you could see it. I remember the smoke, but I didn't yeah. pay attention. You know, uh, I think over 30 people died that day, Jews. I don't remember the yeah. details. Yeah. But you do remember the, the event. You do remember the day, the event of the Altalina. Uh, More or less. Yeah. I was busy keeping alive. Yeah. But you were definitely in the area, and they brought you guys there to block off routes, and you found slicks of the Etzel in the, in the Pardesim. Yeah. And slick him that we found that made me mad like hell. Because you guys barely had weapons. We didn't have weapons, and the other Etzel had tons of weapons. They didn't have men. Otherwise, we could have had those weapons. It would have changed the whole uh, uh, the whole battles. Okay, so that's the Altalina. I'm glad that we talked about it because I didn't. Mm. Uh, I'm glad we talked about the Altalina because it's a very it's a very important. Uh, part of, our, of, of, of the 1948. So when you finish your corporal's course, you don't want to go back to the Alexandroni Brigade. I went to the Palmach. I understand. Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about right now. You finish your corporal's... What I'm trying to figure out is who told you or who... because. You're seeing action in the Alexandroni Brigade. Because yesterday you told me that you left the Alexandroni Brigade because there wasn't enough action. I don't, I find that very hard to believe because you're in four, five, six battles here in, in one month, a month and a half. But it's not enough for you. That's right. I ran away and I joined the Palmach because the Palmach had action all the time. Okay. So tell me the difference between the Palmach, for somebody who doesn't understand, thank you so much, for somebody who doesn't understand and for somebody who wasn't living... Why do you give him a small cup and me a big cup? Because you're a big guy. <laughs> what is the difference between the Palmach and the Israeli and the army, the newly formed army? What's the difference? The army is based on the British army, right? The Palmach is based on the Hevra. For somebody who doesn't understand what Hevra is, explain to me what the Hevra is. The guys. The, the boys. The boys. The boys. Your comrades in arms. Now, when you're in the Alexandroni Brigade, are you hearing stories about the Palmach that are kind of like... So how do you know that you need to leave the Alexandroni Brigade? How do you because know? I had friends there. Okay, thank you. I want to know... Who's feeding you this information that you're saying you know I I'm came, out of here? I came to here. Israel through France. In France, I was trained by Palmach. The trainer in France, in Marseille, 
was all under command of the Palmachnikim. That's where I was influenced by the Palmach. And I wanted to join the Palmach. Okay. So the whole time you're in the Alexandroni Brigade, you're, you're kind of in bitter. In Marseille. You're bitter. What? The whole time that you're in the Alexandroni Brigade, you're kind of bitter. You don't want to be there. No, it was bullshitting. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, I'm going to freshen your memory. Okay? And you're going to talk to me about this after I read this to you. So Yitzhak Modai didn't want, didn't want to help you. No. You said, please help me. Please get me out of here. He's like, no, we need you here. He wants me. Okay. Was he a, what kind of guy was Yitzhak Modai? Very difficult for me to say, but I liked him as a person. Okay. I got along well with him. Okay. So Yitzhak Modai is not helping you. This is what it says in your book. Two nights later, Alan Lipman, another South African, That's and right. I left our equipment with a letter on, on the beds, took our belongings, and ran away and joined the Palmach headquarters in Tel Aviv. Ooh. Alan, uh, Alan? Yeah, you and Alan Lip, 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 Lipman. That's right. Alan Lipman became a communist. Alan Lipman became anti-Israel. And the people used to talk about him. And I said, you talk about Alan Lippen. He was in the war with me fighting. What do you mean? He, because in South Africa, he was preaching left, left, left wing. He went back to South Africa and preached. Mom, he went completely left wing. I couldn't believe it's the same person that I, I slept with and lived with. He was a Marxist? Marxist is, 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 is not, not left enough. What's the name of the famous South African communist, Joe, I don't know. Joe Sol Solo? Joe I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I, I had nothing to do with, with him. Okay. So you write a letter and you put it on your bed to your officers and the Alex, is it like, what, what, first of all, can't you be court-martialed for running away from your brigade? As far as I know, you can. You're the deserter. Yeah. Hmm. Any deserter, but who deserted in Israel? You deserted from one unit to another. You didn't desert <laughs> not to fight. It was the other way around. You were trying to get with your mates. Everyone was deserting to be with his mates, your friends. Do you, okay. Huh? And you write a letter and you put it on your bed. I wrote and a letter? I le and I left, I, we left our equipment uh, with a letter on our beds. What do you write on a letter like this? I didn't write dear, a letter. Alan wrote a letter. Dear Alan wrote dear a letter. I didn't write letters. Alan wrote a letter and said we went away to join the Palmach. That's all it said. We told them where we're going. We didn't want them to think we deserted us. Right. So you go to the Palmach, okay, we ran away to the Palmach. That people understood because you want to be in a fighting you or not. We told them that we wanted to join the Palmach. I met, I met Yuval Green, the driver of Yisrael Kram, Krami, Krami, Krama, who was in charge of the Hayot HaNegev, That's right. 9th Battalion That's how I joined them. of the Palmach Negev Brigade. Yuval told me to meet him at 6 o'clock in the morning on the steps of Habima. That's Peter. right. Me and my friends sat there and waited for them. And a woman opposite took us in and gave us breakfast. But one of the flats there, they saw us sitting there waiting on the wind. They called us in and gave us breakfast. And then, Yuval, then they came to fetch us. And they came with their jeeps, and we joined the jeeps, the Chayot HaNegev. Can you translate what Chayot HaNegev means in English? The animals are of the Negev. Of the desert? No, the of the desert, that's right. The Negev was desert. Desert animals. We were animals. If you looked at us with beards and what's in them, we looked terrible. We didn't have decent uniforms, everyone. I had shorts, this one had longs. It wasn't a permanent uniform. We were a comradeship group, put it that way.
What's the time? The time is... She'll tell us. If she can read it. Put your glasses do you want, on. Do you want to take a little break? No, no. No, we can take a little break. If you go to okay. the restroom or something. Or we'll I, just want, I, I want to nut something. Okay, we'll take a break. Annabelle! Annabelle! So when we continue, we're going to start in Ber Yaakov. Right? According to what? I, I need a sandwich or something. Continuing. Yes, Yavol. Okay, Yavol. Yavol, I click so, my heels. Do you hear me click my heels? Yekas. I grew up with the Germans in Kvashmaria. They kicked the heels. They were all officers. I've, you know, the, the mayor of Kvashmaria wants to, to give me a museum for my museum. Yeah, I've got a museum yeah. of the Jews. I want, he wants to give me a place for, the, for my material. For the stuff down here? The stuff down there. Have you seen my German books? You German? These from the Jews of Quash Mariau. Jews of Quash Mariau that fought with the Kaiser Wilhelm's army. Yeah. Just show me when we get down there. Huh? I want to continue now. Okay. Have some ice cream. Okay. You're going to take me yeah. eating yeah. ice cream? Yeah, well, you know, it's okay. So tell me, Joe. <clears throat> We're now, we talked about there was always scrimmages in the Negev and we were looking for action. They, ref, uh, they refused, but we, uh, we met with the driver. So for you to transfer units, and was it, was, when you went to the Haganah, head, to the Palmach headquarters in Tel Aviv, and you said, I want to join, and they're like, oh yeah, of course you can join. Was it that easy to join them? Was it? It doesn't seem like it would be that easy to join them because if it was that easy to join them, everybody would join them. Why? How did you do it? I walked in. I wanted to join them, and they took me. They took me. They told me to be at six o'clock in the morning on the steps, and they came and picked me up and then took me down. They didn't interview you. They didn't this. They no, didn't they were looking. This is 1948. Okay. You had Etzel Lechi. What's them? Everyone trying to build up, and we were, and the Arabs were attacking us. You didn't think that time. Action. We were in action. Okay, I'm just going to let you finish your ice cream. Hmm? I'm going to let you finish your ice cream and then we'll continue because... Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. No sex questions. No. We talked about that yesterday. Did we talk sex? Yes. Oh, I forgot that. Yeah. Better remind me what it's about. Anyways... You are picked up at the Habima Theater with your friend and taken down to the area of near Rehovot. Nahon. What is there? What's, is that where the... That they were forming the Jeep Commander Unit were being formed there by volunteers, most of them Anglo-Saxons. And I brought a couple and other couple, and we all went down to Beryakov to get into the, and we got brand new Jeeps. Ben-Gurion. And we stole some Jeeps from United Nations. I want to hear that story. Well, we collected Jeeps because they didn't give us Jeeps. After we collected Jeeps, Ben-Gurion gave us Jeeps, brand new ones. And we were 12 jeeps, they formed the Special Jeep Commander Unit, which is our unit. And this unit did all the fighting in the Negev. We'd do raids behind lines. We'd go through, I remember one night was fantastic. You lined up, all your machine guns firing this way. And we went up to the railway line, shot the whole railway line up, the Egyptian railway line and retreated with front special because it was all heavy dunes and we turn around and come back and then we'll fire with the back guns so with these type of raids we were doing all the time and the, the egyptians were typical british army fixed positions if you know what i mean the cap the whole place was fixed and organized like the british army 
not like a commander unit that we were do, playing. So this is the way it was. This is the way we operated all the time, commando type, behind the lines. Rina, did you notice he can write? He's educated, he can write. Tell me about the UN jeeps. Hmm? Tell me about the United Nation jeeps that you stole. I want to hear about the story. We we were forming a jeep unit, and the government didn't give us the jeeps, so we decided we took half tracks that were in our unit, and we went out on the road of Cape Town uh, 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 between Natanya. What's them? Each the one Natania went. And? Natanya, the, the, the Nat Natanya Connection Road, you know, uh, where the coastal road hits the, uh, 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 Natanya is in the middle of the country. Where the coastal road and the Natanya meet, yeah. that's where we put up a, a roadblock and, and, and any jeep that came we captured. We took them. Any jeep? Civilian, Israeli jeep. Couldn't care. And we took him, and the Mem Tzadikim came out the next day looking for us, but they wouldn't find us because they didn't want to find us. How but, do you steal UN jeeps? Hmm? How do you steal a UN jeep? How do you? It's parked there. You cut, it has a chain. You cut, the, I, my job was to cut the chains. Okay, let's get into specifics. I like this. You're going to get to We take our cutters, yep. cut the chain and drive the jeep away. And you know, connect the wires. That was no problem. So there was a UN base here in near Netanya? No, they parked their jeeps at a, at a hotel. They, you, the UN were at hotels and had je, a parking lot operated with jeeps. So you stole jeeps from the UN? We stole from the UN. We stole from anyone that left a jeep anywhere. All jeeps were, were, were good to take. Sounds like a banana republic. We are a banana republic. <laughs> we was a banana republic. We are. I need you to tell me a story, a specific story of you guys stealing a jeep. Think. <sighs> We went with our half tracks with drivers. We came to Prince like Natanya. Whose idea, huh? Whose idea was it to steal Jeeps? Your commander? Come on, the Palmach. The, Palma. the, the Palmach had orders from the army to do one, two, three, four, but they had to have Jeeps. They didn't give them Jeeps. So we went out and made roadblocks and stole Jeeps. All our, we, we told you, and the next day, Ben Gurion gave orders to give us new jeeps. After we stole, they gave us orders to get new jeeps, and we got completely new jeeps with two machine guns and everything, and we were 12, 13 jeeps in a commander unit. This was our jeep commander unit. And about two, like three people on a jeep, driver, three gunner. Three people, and the, the Machlaka, was made up of three, uh, of three jeeps, four jeeps, and, uh, and the Pluga was made of 12 jeeps. Yeah, makes sense. So... And which Machlaka were you in? Hmm? I don't remember. You don't remember, okay. Machlaka one, two, what, three. What was, what was your position on the jeep? Were you a gunner, a okay. driver? Driver, gunner, Kolbornik, Kolbornik. Right, you guys rotated jobs, mm -hmm. yeah. Memkov was the only one that was uh, above us. Yeah, but you're a Memkov now also. No, you're not. Not yet. Huh? No. Ah. So when you joined the Palmach, you lost your Memkov position. I didn't lose my Memkov position. I just didn't take it. Okay. Afterwards, I, I, I took it back. They made me a an officer in charge. In 55, I went to Kuskachinim. 
Okay, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that. <clears throat> we'll get to that. Um, we came in, we, okay, we became an international band of brothers as we were a small unit and operating mostly by ourselves away from the battalion. We became very close. The Israelis learned English, but the Macha volunteers had a hard time learning Hebrew. We learned to recognize the orders given, given out in Hebrew by their sounds. Following the war, we stuck together. My wife, my wife said that I was, uh, that I was courted. Okay, that's that. Nah. So, in your platoon, your 12 Jeeps, probably around 30 people, your job is to go beyond enemy lines and to counterattack and get out of there. What commandos do? Long Range Desert Group of World War II. Yeah. Same principle. Okay. Also, who, who you are, remember there was Popsky, the Popsky's uh, 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 army? Popsky's army was a group of, uh, of Polish. Commando jeeps. That was based on that too. So those are kind of your your mottos. Hmm? These are your mottos at the time. These were yeah. yeah. These are the people, people that did before us. That did it before before you, not too long before you also. And in World War Two. In World War Two, correct. So in this unit of yours, in this platoon, is it fifty fifty Machal people, Sabras? I can't tell you. We have a kind kind. Welcome. Were there Machal people in this unit with you? Yes. Yeah. Machal people were looking for action. So they came and joined. Okay. We remained in Be'er Yaakov in August and September, training and preparing to go back into action in the Negev. That's right. The Negev was cut off. Okay. But you're in Be'er Yaakov, you're not in the Negev yet. Be'er Yaakov is near Rehovo, it's not too far from here. And you have, it says here that throughout August and September, you are trained. Do you remember these? You must feel very good to be in the Palmach now and out of the Alexandroni Brigade, correct? I ran away. You're, you're happy, you're, you're definitely where you want to be now. With the Hebra that I liked. Yeah. Uh, maneuvers. You're learning how a new a new form of fighting. You're learning how to be a commando. The, That's the, right. The maneuvers must have been very physically hard. They must have been uh, different than being in the Alexandroni Brigade. The I'm young. I understand. I'm big. I'm strong. I never felt the difference. Do you remember anything about the maneuvers that you can tell me about? Uh, what kind of training you guys did? Whatever we did came easy. Nothing to, nothing to talk about. Okay. During the months of August and September, there was, a, there was a United Nations ceasefire. This gave the Israeli army time to re-equip to re and to train for the next fight. The Palmach was um, integrated into the army. And even though the, the officers still ate with other soldiers, so now the Palmach is put into the army. No. They had one, they said then, what they Ben Gurion said, one army, not three armies, because there was Etzel, Lechi, Haganah. And Ben Gurion wanted and one army. And what's the Palmach? Palmach is, is part, of, part of the Haganah. Mm -hmm. So now, Ben Gurion wanted one army. You didn't have two armies? You so didn't you're have not two. in the Palmach anymore, you're actually in the Israeli army now. The Palmach was part of the Israeli army. It makes a difference. Rina, don't fall asleep on me. You can you will go lie down. You look tired. Why, why does it say here that you say that the Palmach was not very liked at army headquarters? In the book you say here, the Palmach was not very much liked by the army headquarters. Because they were independent Explain to me and they that. operated independently. And the Palmach boys were used to being Palmachnikim. 
which didn't have the bullshit of the army, if you know what I mean. A balagan shela palmach. You play in one word. But they'd get things done. But you get, yeah, yes. Okay, we talked about the, uh, we talked about the uh, UN Jeeps. Uh, we talked about, um, okay, this we talked about. We even stole a private car from the Italian commander then. We even stole one private car from yeah. our battalion commander. His studio baker. Huh? A Studebaker. That was the car? The, the Studebaker was the car that we stole from the commander. Remember the Studebaker car? Studebaker was a company mm -hmm. that made cars. That's why I quote, told you a Studebaker. It was the Studebaker. Okay. Tell me about... Uh it says here the whole um, nice little paragraph in the book about how you took care of your jeeps, how you looked at it as they were kind of your horses. Of course. Tell, tell me, to elaborate on that a little bit. Look, your jeep was everything to you. I, clean, I loved my jeep. I was a driver in charge. No one touched my jeep. And the jeeps, they were our horses. They were our, and we all looked after our jeep. Your jeep could move, you moved. If you didn't look after it, it wouldn't work. So it was like a horse. Our jeeps were like horses. And we loved our jeeps. That's it. What can I tell you more? Young man with a nice horse. Didn't you have to learn, did you understand mechanics before this of cars and jeeps, or you learned it there? If you grew up in the country where I grew up, you could take a jeep to pieces and put it together. That's what everyone in the country could do. You didn't have garages, you didn't have what same, you had to fix yourself. So I was really good with my hands. My sons are two today, really good with their hands too. I could take a jeep to piece and put it together again, if you know what I mean. Without knowing the names of the parts. Annabelle, Annabelle, I want a cup of coffee. You want a cup of coffee? You want a cup of coffee? No, thank you. Animal! What happened? She sunk in the ground? Animal! Okay. Cup of coffee, please. Do you want anything? Okay, we're actually going to talk right now, hold on, we're, we're going to talk now about your military operations in the Negev. So, sep August, September, you're in maneuvers, you're training. When do you first go into action, into military action in the Negev? When does it, when does it the start? The Negev was cut off. I understand, I understand. The Negev was cut off. And we had to go down. So we went through the enemy lines, uh, I think it was October. I'm not certain. Commando raids by Jeep Company of the 9th Armored Battalion That's right. of the Palmach Negev Brigade in the War of Independence, 1948-1949. Mm -hmm. Okay? It says, um, the return of the Negev. Uh, hold on a second. So the Negev is cut off from the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. Explain to me what the situation is and what your, upper, what, what your goal is, what you guys need to do. We were cut off in the Negev. The Egyptians had cut us off by going through to, to, to Jerusalem, the Jerusalem road. And we were cut off in the Negev. And we operated in the Negev 
to the kibbutzim that were held in out there. They were our bases. And they were cut off. The whole Negev was cut off. And uh, we operated as a unit behind the lines. We'd go in there, shoot the, the hell out of the Arabs and run. And the Arabs had fixed bases. We went in one raid, I remember, and we shot up their patrol in the sand dunes and ran like hell. So that's what we were doing, commando raids all the time. And we were youngsters, man. We, we were enjoying it. <laughs> okay, but there's a lot of significant... Do you want me to walk you through the events or do you remember the events? As they unfolded, there's Bresheva, there's Gvulot, there's... We need to go chronologically. Okay, you, you, you decide what you want. Okay. So... <clears throat> In early October, the whole brigade and the Jeep company, after being re-equipped, uh, related back to the Negev. It was still cut off from the rest of the state of Israel. The following is a breakdown of what my Jeep company did and participated in the following campaigns until the end of the war. That's right. Okay, so we're going to go... As you like. Operation by operation. I need you to try and... Remember. Yes, to remember what, 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 what was going on here. So we have uh, the, return of, uh, the return to the Negev, guarding and patrolling the water pipeline to the kibbutzim. That's right. Okay, let's talk about that. The Arabs would come and blow up, try and blow up the, the pipeline to the kibbutzim, and we had to guard it. So we'd patrol it, and anyone coming near there, we'd shoot them up near the pipelines. If the Arabs came, they, they wouldn't operate like a... They were better when Arabs being paid for, you know what I mean? Sure. And uh, they didn't operate like an army. So we operated uh, very well that way. We kept the pipeline open. Would you patrol the pipeline, see if there were holes in it, like... Um... First, the military holes, they let us know because it'll blow up and the pressure drops, so the unit knew already. But they didn't blow us up very much. We kept the pipeline open. To all the kibbutzim there. Um, what about uh, patrols on the Egyptian border? There is no Egyptian border. There, they, isn't it like... There's Palestine the Egyptian border. Why not? That Egypt... Let, let, let's put it this way. Isn't Egypt at this time the best equipped Arab army in the Middle East? As far as I know, yes. Yeah. No, the Iraqis were well equipped. You forget the British were there. They, all these places were well equipped. So it wasn't that... Uh, We were fighting all the Arabs, put it that way. Look, Jordanian had the, it was British, British army. And who was considered the best? Who, the Egyptians? Jordanians. The Jordanians, yeah. Considered the best soldiers. The, what? The Jordanians were considered the best yes. soldiers, yeah? They, they were British. Yeah. It, yeah. They, were into, they were completely British, completely. British army. Completely. Um, Um, commando raids on the railway line and blowing up the rail, rail, rail routes. What was... There was a railway line in Egypt. And we'd make raids onto it and blow it up so the trains couldn't go. You know, we'd go across there at night, line up the jeeps, shoot up everything on the way and shoot up everything on the way back. Twelve jeeps, fourteen jeeps, like this, and we had covered, uh, there'd be a, a distance of, say, 20 meters between each jeep, so you covered a pretty wide face, and the, the jeeps each had two machine guns, so when you went that way, the machine goes that way, and even the machine gun, the next check one was higher, we could fire this way. When they turned around, the top machine gun turned back, and fired backwards and sidewards. Mm -hmm. So we covered a whole area 
in, in, under Ash, put it that way. But with the railway, like the Egyptians had a railway that came from Cairo to the to that. That's right. Like, that's right. Yeah. El Arish always that uh, railway. So the you Egyptian. guys went into El Arish. Um, no. El Arish, yes. How yes. far did you guys go in? Let me think back. We went into what time? Towards El Arish we went. As far as El Arish we went too. We and actually went within 10 miles of, of, of uh, the British, the, the, if you remember the United Nations gave us, not the British, the French, gave us to, to pull back with ten, to 10 kilometers from the canal. I think you're getting mixed up. With the Suez, Suez Canal, we'd walked, we'd tack, we went all the way down for 10 kilometers away from the canal. That's when the British and the French landed on the canal against the Egyptians. That's in 56. That's right. Yeah, I'm talking about 48. 48 wasn't that long, I can't know. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna focus more on 48, we'll get to 56. Um, It says here, intelligence action uh, to get information on Egyptian positions that cut off the Negev on the Egyptian occupied part of the Negev, including the Gaza Strip. Okay, let's talk about, this isn't really, let's talk about the operation, the capture and occupation of Beersheba. Were you a part of that, of that operation? Okay, let's talk about that. I need you. Okay. Part of my Jeep commando, the Egyptians had uh, artillery base there. And we ran behind with the Jeeps before we captured Beersheba and captured the artillery pieces, which were based outside Beersheba. We came with the Jeeps behind. The Egyptians afterwards retreated. I went to Abu Ghella. But we came out this way and captured the guns, which was the idea. And our jeeps used to make raids on Egyptian positions. Now, the Egyptians had fixed positions or what? They were done. When, when did the battle for Beersheba start? How did it, how did it, because as far as I, I remember, Beersheba wasn't a big, uh, um, Priority for Ben Gurion. I don't know about that, but I can tell you that we went into Beersheba, we went down, and uh, Beersheba became our base of operation. From there, we went out all over the Negev. But Beersheba was our our basic home. My home was there, and my unit was there. And we operated out of Beersheba. Do you remember anything specific about the battle for Beersheba? Do you know how, remember how long it lasted? No, I don't remember that. But we had one thing that I had. The, in, during the battle, the Italians had red hand grenades. The Italians? Italians. Army had red army. Now, now the Egyptians that were there had these red grenades. From Italian grenades, I call them. And now these grenades, we came across. In my unit, this is what I personally had to do. There was a whole area in one street full of the grenades that spilled. So now you've got to the, what? the grenades had spilled all over the floor in Beersheba. In, Beersheba. in Beersheba. Probably a vehicle that overturned or something. I don't know. But uh, we had now to, to clean it up. So what did we do? We sat with, took my boys with guns, and we sat there and shot at the grenades. The minute you hit them, they'd explode. So we, we did that for nearly two days. Sat there and shot grenades and exploded. We were like kids playing with, with fireworks. Was the, the battle for Beersheba, Beersheba was, it a, was it a bloody? Battle? Was it in, it was relatively in not a... They ran away. They ran away. 
the Egyptians ran away and we came with our jeeps and shot everything up. And, we, and, the, and the local population of Beersheba, was it mostly Bedouins? Arabs, Arabs, Bedouins, but they left. They retreated. The army retreated, but there were civilians there. And the civilians went with them. Really? Yeah. Beersheba was empty. The Arabs wouldn't stay when the Jews came. What's wrong with you? Stay under Jewish rule? Who's for an Arab are you? you something. Um, this whole time, you're, I mean, you're already in Israel for a few months. You came in May, it's already October. Do you have any contact whatsoever with any family members back home, letters, nothing? I did, when I left South Africa, my mother thought I'm still in Johannesburg. Why? The Zionist Federation, I wrote 20 letters and left it with him. And they would be posting a letter to my mother when I was already a couple of months in Israel, but she didn't know she was getting letters from Johannesburg. I, we prepared letters to send her that she would know that I'm in Johannesburg. So she doesn't even know you're in Palestine, in Israel? I've been in Palestine a couple she, of months. She doesn't know. Only after that when I wrote and told her. This was because, <coughs> because of the Haganah of Bittachon. Yeah? I mean, they didn't want the world to know. They, the same thing when I went through Cairo. I went through a Dutch Reformed Church. Not as Jewish. I'm too big to be Jewish, they said. This, your, your mother has no idea that you're fighting in Israel. My family couldn't worry about that. My mother had hotels. She was busy. I never had a family home, if you know what I mean. I grew up at boarding schools. I know. Without a mother and a father. And uh, so it's a different mentality. The whole family is a different mentality. So that's the way I grew up. It made me very independent. And of course, your brother and sister are also back in South Africa. Do they know where you are, or they also have no idea? Nobody has no idea. So if you, God forbid, God forbid you would have been hurt or killed in the war, nobody would have known. No, they would have known. They would have let them know. The Federation. I was registered with the Jews, with the Fed, Zionist Federation. Okay? Yes. Just wanted to make sure that we got the whole family situation sorted out. Um, We are looking through at the Prince of the Prince Park Hotel. The Negev Desert Pro Moth Grade, where I joined, was extremely cohesive fighting force, blah, blah, blah. We also, UK, da, 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 we're talking about some people here. Um, towards the beginning of October, we were supposed to move back south, but we're still short of Jeeps. The word went out that we needed vehicles. Da, 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 the MPs. We, we went and stole. Yeah, we, stole. Talk, we talked about that. We're just going to go through. We're going to go slowly through your through your book, and get to exactly where we need to get to. Here's something. Um, so now, basically, Beersheba becomes after the conquer of Beersheba. Beersheba becomes your unit's home. 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 And it's easy to operate because it's kind of in the middle of the Negev. Geographically, it's a good place to, to set out from. On Rosh Hashanah, the army major had taken a big seafront restaurant for the Machal boys. Uh, as we had no homes, they gave us New Year's Eve dinner. After dinner, we had nothing to do, so, and some of the boys had to go, had too much to drink. We walked around the streets singing loudly. 
They were right. mostly South African boys singing South African songs. We went, we went to the Exodus Hotel, which the Air Force had taken over and turned into a dormitory for the Air Force Mahal boys. That's right. We took a blanket, stood on the, on the street. Some of the boys climbed to the second floor of the hotel and, and jumped into down. the blanket. Okay, let's, let's talk about this Rosh Hashanah dinner. They were, they were all, let's, let's, listen, they were World War II veterans. They'd been through life already. I was a youngster among them. It doesn't matter. And they were, they, they were having a good time walking in Tel Aviv street, singing. And everyone accepted us. I'm sure, yeah. And they went in, the, for instance, like we went in the Park Hotel, was the hotel. We go into the Park Hotel, they remembered me. I, I don't drink, but... The Makal boys used to come in and make a party and break the hotel up. That's the standard. I never forget, I come looking on one holiday, I come looking for all the boys. And the manager of the hotel sees me, says, do me a favor, take a bottle of whiskey and get the hell out of here. Because they always broke up his, 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 uh, his restaurant. So, so, the, so the Makal boys were known to be... Not that they weren't like that, but they would uh, get drunk and get yeah. happy. Yeah, well, they have no homes, they have no families. That's right. They're alone. And we, we, that was our family meeting each other. And did that happen quite often that you would? You no, not so often, actually. They the were the, look, they were in the air. Uh, most of the Machel boys were in the air force. I was in the uh, Palmach on the floor. That's something else. But uh, they went in the air force. I'm going. Oh, I'm where are you going? Nice meeting you too. So, <clears throat> do you remember this this Rosh Hashanah though? This uh, this uh... jumping out the windows. Yeah. We, look, you, yeah. We, we were a whole bunch of youngs. Most of them World War Two veterans. Most of them were Air Force people. They had fought through World War Two, and they were still happy go lucky. You was in the army, you free. You know, in World War Two. You stayed a little boy in the army. You didn't have responsibility. You had no home. You had no what's name. You were a completely different wavelength. Think you got no home. You got nowhere to go to. Your only family is the Hevla. But you can see that in the book too. Yeah. How come you say, you go on white so young? Excuse me? You're going white so young. We're here? Yes. I'm 40 years old. You were a, a youngster, no? Not that's a, what I said. Not a youngster, exactly, but you know. So it says here, um, You're trying to get the, th the things I didn't write. No, 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 I'm trying to, no, the things that you wrote, I, I want to go over them. I need, the, I need you just to elaborate them vocally and not in, your, in, in the book. So, the, what is this? Okay, you want to talk about... Uh, Whatever you tell me. I know, but I need you to, to elaborate and, uh, and talk about it. We're going we're gonna to go back to, we're going to go back to this, we're going to go back to here for a minute. Um... As the unit was still short of vehicles, we were supposed to move down before Yom Kippur. The unit brigade commander gave orders for us to go out of the out of the of the cons, cons, con, uh, out of the vehicles, so that we were short of. We went out of the half tracks we had with the officers. And we stopped any jeep on the road and, and took it. But that that's yes. A couple of days before Yom Kippur. A few other commanders were ordered to report immediately to company commander's office. Much of the of much to our amusement, we were sent on a com combat mission. We had um, two con uh, we had two jeeps. In we Kush went Gai. with half tracks, and we went and camp took any jeep we could stop on the road. No matter whose it was, the generals that took United Nations jeeps. We captured jeeps. This made the government give us jeeps. 
we used that as, a, as the, and the government gave us jeeps, then, brand new jeeps. Yeah. This is how we built our jeep commander unit up, by stealing United Nations jeeps. So there's an incident here, a specific incident here with a, with an with uh, with um, an Air Force officer who almost pulled the gun who pulled the gun out on you. Do you want me to read it, or you want to tell me what happened? Just read it, don't okay. remember. Upon entering the city of Tel Aviv, around the garages and workshops that's right, that's right. in the area of South Tel Aviv today, we found a jeep parked in front of a workshop entrance. I got off the half, half track and let those who were present in the workshop know the jeep was uh, confisc confiscated. Yeah. They, in response, said that the jeep was the property of, an, of the Air Force and that they didn't have the key. The jeep's wheel was locked with a chain. In the meantime, an Air Force officer arrived, arrived on the scene and, and went into something of a combat position in front of me laying his hand on his gun and tried to conv I tried to convince him with with the fake letter I had but he wasn't buying that one he pulled out his gun and said over my dead body you'll get this jeep I, s I saw I had no other choice left so I shouted to the boys who stayed in the in the half track boys load your magazines <laughs> I don't remember Okay. <laughs> That's good. I want you, I want, okay, so now that I read you this, I want you to tell me what the hell is happening, what, what's going on here? What is actually happening? We need the jeeps to go to the Negev. We had no jeeps, and we were going to take jeeps and make it. Now, we were all youngsters and what time. And we said, over my dead, like I said, over my dead body. We came, we said, and... And when you come there with a half track and everyone loads his guns, we're not talking shit. So they backed down. These were the people that tried to take the jeeps that we took the jeeps from were Air Force people. They weren't fighting people. It's an office in the Air Force uh, in the Are kitchen. Sure, he's clean. Uh, 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 he has three meals a day. Uh, yeah, 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 you had the Hayota Negev there, and we uh, and they, we had had, had a, a reputation already of Chayot. So it, it, they backed down very quickly and gave us whatever we wanted. You know, that's the only way we could get our jeeps. But the next day, Ben Gurion, the Mem Tzadikim came out looking for us, but they didn't look very hard. They knew where we were. They were scared. So what happened, happened is all of a sudden, we get 12 brand new jeeps. The government gave us jeeps. Brand new, I didn't so, so this specific uh, incident, incident, you did take the jeep from the Air Force at the end? No, I don't know where they came from. The no, government. no. In this specific event with the Air Force guy, yeah. you did take their jeep at the end? Yes. We took any jeep we could get. The jeeps were ours. We were the jeep commander group. <laughs> they were our horses. The old cavalry. I had one thing good for me. You see me with a beard, what's that? Two machine guns? You don't argue with me, if you know what I mean. It helps a lot. My size. And the way I was dressed and my beard, they backed down. Can I drink my coffee? Of course, of course you can drink your coffee. We continued to search in Tel Aviv but found nothing. Our search in Perach Tikva was of no use either. It was only near Ra'anana Junction that we stopped another Jeep parked in the side of the road with the hood up. I thought to myself, we finally find a Jeep and it's broken. I asked the two boys who were sitting in the, in the Jeep if they had any problems. 
One of them answered, no, we are just resting here. Do you remember this? Kind of, no. Go on, live here. Uh, we were just resting here. I was relieved, but they weren't as they had it as they heard that the jeep was uh, confiscated. What were, what were we going to tell our commander, they asked. The logistics officer of your unit must report to the chief of staff. To blah, 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 blah. Nothing, this is not here. Okay. Okay, I think we're going to stop for today. As you like. Yep. Up to you. Yep. I think we did a little bit more than an hour and a half today. So we have 40 minutes left. That's good. And 